Dean Oliver, former assistant coach for the Washington Wizards and a statistical analyst for sports. I'm here to answer your questions from the internet. This is Sports Math Sport. First up, at Womax asks, what studies do you do to become a sports statistician? That is a good question. This did not exist when I was a kid. Having a career where you get to do math in sports is a great innovation of the 21st century. That being said, it's not the easiest thing to get into anymore. In order to do it, you really need to know sports, for sure. Sometimes people forget that, but you also need to know things like programming with a language like Python. You need to know things about statistics, basic statistics, or a little bit more advanced that will only help you. Because this is an interdisciplinary job, you need to know how to communicate it. You need to know how to communicate math to sports people, and you need to know how to communicate sports to math people. At FWH 1027, what is the most efficient shot in basketball? The most efficient shot in basketball is the layup, any shot around the rim. Getting to the rim not only is a higher percentage shot, it will more likely get you to the foul line, which players make at about 75 to 80%. The second most important shot is any shot beyond the three-point arc. Anything out here. Shots out here are made at about 35%, but because of the extra point awarded for being beyond the arc, they are more efficient. At NBA ADED, statistically speaking, who is better, Jordan or LeBron? Frankly, Michael Jordan was probably a little bit better defender. LeBron is a little bit better passer than Michael Jordan was. LeBron adopted also the three-point shot a lot earlier than Michael Jordan did, but all in all, they are almost the same. At Max Sports Studio asks, hypothetical, a player is fouled at the buzzer. He gets to shoot two free throws. His team is down by one. Is the probability that he makes the second shot affected by the outcome of the first free throw? First of all, the first free throw is usually much harder. Players haven't been able to dial in their depth perception. There's also this thought that their heartbeat is probably a little bit faster because the action is kind of calming down. Usually it's easier to make the ones after that. But in this situation where the pressure is on, players do react very differently under pressure. And there have been studies that have shown free throw shooters who are under pressure, they do shoot worse by five to 10%. At Kukui Online asks, does defense really win championships? In basketball in particular, what you see is that offense carries teams through the regular season. What happens when you get to the playoffs is the best teams know how to ramp up their defense. They are playing better offensive teams, but they know how to strategically defend those teams, take away the best players. That is the way in which you see defense winning championships. Defense doesn't win championships on its own. Next up, at Elite Dog 3 asks, what is true shooting percentage? I've been hearing it, but what is the official way to calculate it? True shooting percentage is just total points scored by a player or a team divided by the shot attempts they've taken, which is a combination of field goal attempts from the field and a fraction of their free throw attempts. It's more representative of the actual contribution of a player because it captures how many points a player is getting from their field goal attempts. So if they're shooting a lot from three, it's capturing that efficiency over someone who takes a lot of twos. And it's capturing their ability to get to the foul line, which can be enormous for players like Jimmy Butler or Giannis or LeBron. At King DJ 5297, I'm supposed to believe that advanced stats work for the NBA? Yes, advanced stats work for the NBA probably better than other sports. For instance, there are team offensive ratings and team defensive ratings, which are how many points a team scores and allows per 100 possessions. That is a very accurate representation of how good an offense or a defense is. The NFL has maybe 14 drives for a team in a game. Baseball has maybe 40 at bats. In basketball, you have probably 80 possessions where you have the best players able to touch the ball and able to shoot the ball. So you get a very good representation of how good teams are. From IC at NOLA Legend, assists are the most overrated stats in basketball. When will people understand this? 
Assists in the MBI are probably given out too easily. They give them for very simple passes, but they also give them for more difficult passes. The players who get a lot of the easy assists are probably overrated, but the ones who have the passes for the alley-oops, for the layups, the ones in transition, those are very valuable. I wouldn't call them overrated as a stat, but I would say that some of the players who get assists are overrated. At vaguely artistic, if the triangle is such a simple shape, why can't anyone explain the triangle offense? I'm not going to explain the triangle offense here. I can tell you that. The triangle offense is successful only with a couple coaches, frankly. It's, it was successful with Phil Jackson, with the Bulls, and with the Lakers. You are creating good shots for good players and good shots for even average players who are there to set screens and just play off the ball. And what it does is it relies upon the strengths of the players themselves to make decisions. Reddit user 360 asks, what statistics are most important in the NBA? It's not things like points and rebounds and turnovers and assists. It is offensive rating and defensive rating. Points a team scores and allows per 100 possessions. Beyond that, when you're trying to understand what a team is doing to be efficient on either side of the basketball, the most important things are what are called the four factors. And the four factors are how well you shoot, which is an effective field goal percentage, which weights three-point shots more than two-point shots, a turnover percentage, an offensive rebounding percentage, and then how often you get to the line. Those four things will tell you why an offense or a defense is efficient. That's all the questions we have for sports math. Till next.